Hi, everybody. This is Phil from No Dice and Road, and I'm very happy to announce you our guest for today's interview. I'm talking about Matthias Lilia from Free League Publishing. Thank you. We have prepared a little recap of uh, what Symbarum is. Symbarum and the ruins of Symbarum will be the, the main topic of uh, our conversation. Uh, we will make you see this little recap and then we start our conversation. So opening theme and recap. <laughs> Simbarum is a dark fantasy tabletop RPG. It was released in Swedish in 2014, then in English in 2016, reaching a great worldwide popularity. The game line encompasses a dozen hardcover books and it's now smashing the founding threshold on Kickstarter to create a D&D 5e adaptation called Ruins of Simbarum. The original game is a D20 roll under system where all the rolls are made by the players. Characters have a horizontal, very customizable progression, and the game itself is flexible and modular. The Simbarum setting is very rich and engaging. It revolves around the civilization of Umbria that two decades before was forced to flee its homeland and find a new home in the north, in a plain that borders with the ancient and dark forest of Davokar. The forest envelops the rest of the ancient empire of Simbarum, whose ruins lies full of secrets and mysteries. But the exploration of the forest is far from easy, from dangerous monsters to infectious corruption, from mortal obstacles to the elves that vowed to die to keep anyone from disturbing the old ruins and awaken the ancient evil of Simbarum. South of the forest, the new home of the Embryans is a land full of intrigues and opportunities, ruled by the mysterious masked queen Corinthia. Hi again, uh, I'm here with Matthias Lilia, uh, just to Tell us something about him. He is the one, uh, is the mind behind uh, this, the first edition of Coriolis. And he is the uh, game designer and co writer of Simbaru. This one, just to be precise. Uh, Matthias, you uh, founded uh, uh, Jan Ringen the publishing house who published uh, uh, Simbaru in uh, 2014. Uh, before of that, uh, you worked for uh, Paradox Interactive, right. and before of that, uh, you uh, you was a physiotherapist. Right. I am a doctor, so there's still hope for me in the RPG world. Yes. Can there I be hope? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Then uh, Jaringer merged with uh, uh, with the Free League, and uh, from our point of view. Uh, you created uh, uh, a giant, a, a great forge of uh, quality games and uh, great ideas. And uh, how does it feel working there? It feels great. Um, <clears throat> I, I always uh, thought I'd end up, um, or rather I hoped that I would end up making uh, role-playing games for a living. Uh, this was as a kid in the early 80s, so it took a while. But um, I'm actually doing it now, so in a sense I'm living the dream. Oh, the that's going to make it. Yeah. Yes, yes. I'm very happy. I'm very happy yeah. for you. And uh, yeah. uh, the Free League owe you also the name. Because uh, yes. uh, one yeah. of the Zenithians' uh, factions of uh, Coriolis is the Free League. They owe you big. <laughs> yeah, exactly. The, the, the way it came about was uh, we had the company uh, Jarningen, the first iteration that did uh, Coriolis and some other games. And the, the guys who made up, uh, who started Free League, they were uh, fans of us. Mm -hmm. And they started writing material and doing content for us. So they, they then picked uh, the name and then they picked the license Coriolis from us. So they uh, and kept going and they, they did a bunch of other games. And then later we, we did Symbarum and then we merged with that. Yeah. So the so merging was in the destiny. You, I you, think so. We're friends. We're friends yeah. with each other. So games. wonderful. It's, it's wonderful. Like it, 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 Okay, yeah, yeah. let's get to the main topic. So, Ruins yeah. of Symbolum. The Kickstarter mm -hmm. campaign is, uh, is going very well, like all the other campaigns from yeah. Free League Publishing. Uh, we are talking about uh, almost uh, 300,000 euros. 
yeah. baked from uh, uh, almost 3,000 bakers. And now yeah. you have already uh, unlocked the uh, 22 uh, stretch goal. So we will have right. maps, uh, we will have material, we will have uh, yeah. the screen uh, and so on. I was reading in the last uh, email uh, of the update you sent of the campaign that uh, you, you calculated that, uh, uh, for example, they, you took uh, one of the pledges, there was a, a warden of Davokar that uh, it's a 98, uh, 98 euros and it has a, a retail value of 252 euros. So yeah. Uh, every yeah. time I see uh, a Kickstarter from uh, from Free League, I always know that uh, uh, thanks to the the great uh, the great answer of of your public, you are very, you get very generous. You can be very generous with the packaging, and every time uh, I unbox uh, the the box, uh, is very rich mm -hmm. of content and things. It's a it's a beautiful thing. Um, now let's uh, let's get to your your work here so you chose to adapt uh, a great setting and a great game like simba room to the five uh, edition of D&D. &D. Mm -hmm. so Correct. how hard has been the the entire work and uh, uh what what is the biggest uh obstacle right um as you said, the reason we do it is we, we think that uh, more people could enjoy uh, Symbarum and the, the fantastic setting that we we are proud to have created. Uh, but we also know that uh, a lot of people play 5e and a lot of people that play 5e are not interested in switching game mechanics. They are open to, there are even people who have made fan conversions of Symbarum to 5e and such. So we, so we made a little trial balloon of the first game, uh, adventure called the Promised Land, mm -hmm. so you can yes. play a, a couple of levels and try out some classes, and the reactions we got on that made convinced us that we could actually do a Kickstarter on this and get decent, uh, decent backing, which which uh, turned out to be absolutely true. So there's a number of things uh, you can point to that were easy uh, to convert, and there was a couple of things that were hard, a bit harder uh, to convert. Um, one of the harder things or that we had to uh, manage is that, of course, um, 5e has levels from 1 to 20 for a character, going from a noob to some sort of hero or maybe even a superhero. Yes. Um, and the original Symbarum is more compressed. There are, um, you're, not a, you're, you're pretty competent when you start, but you don't maybe cap out as much. So it's, it's less, the, the curve is if 5e like this, the yes, original maybe yes. like that. So there are differences in how uh, progression of power, I guess, for, for, the, for the PCs. That's one. Uh, coming with that is that um, 5e, there's a lot of detail. There's a lot of um, um, every level of these 20 levels need to have something interesting happen. Yes. So the characters also get a lot, yes. a lot of tweaks that don't really match. Um, the original Symbarum has less steps and they are more powerful when they happen. Yes. So we had to map them to each other to make sure that they uh, made sense. So the way I talk about it is we, the, both games, 5e and the original, are they're the same in spirit. You're in Davokar, it's a dark place, the elves don't like you, uh, corruption will take you if you're not careful, there's a lot of intrigue among the humans, so you can never be sure who to trust. That's going to be the same in both. So the spirit is the same. But the details, the mechanics, are going to be slightly different on how we present this because it needs to match both systems. Yes. So the corruption mechanic was quite easy. It, it works the same. Uh, in, in 5e, normally you have spell slots when you cast spells. Yes. If you don't, in Ruins of Symbarum, you just get the higher level spell you cast, the more corruption you get. Okay. So... Uh, and of course, your, your uh, corruption threshold also climbs a bit. So you can cast more low level spells, but you will still be uh, at risk whenever you cast. So it's about spell. taking risk. Yes. How yes. much uh, I will be risking to get uh, where I want to or to avoid uh, a problem? Roughly the same as in the basic, um, the, the original symbol of game, which means that the difference is you can cast low level spells 
in 5e and you can probably do lots of them but they won't affect the outcome as much but as soon as you you move up to the more powerful spells that you can the, the most powerful spells that you have you can get depending on who you are and what you've done before maybe one two or perhaps three and the third might be where you take a chance and might go with the threshold and start getting all kinds of problems so that's going to feel uh, roughly like um uh, like the original game you're going to have more spells of course in 5e but the most powerful ones are going to be limited to you yes okay. that's one uh, one way the other way we did it was we want the davoka to feel um, dangerous um even for more powerful okay uh, characters in 5e so we introduced a new the, uh, the rest mechanic of 5e is important you have short rests and long rests and we added a, a third one called extended rest and the extended okay. rest can only be taken in really safe environments. You need yeah. the a safe barbarian haven. Village. Okay. Yeah, you need a safe haven, a barbarian yeah. village, a uh, an elven hideout yes. if they're friends, if you're friends with them, <laughs> yes. or maybe a, a, something like a tower or something that you can really bar the doors and defend. You can't just stop in a dungeon and do it, or next to whatever okay. tree you find, right? And the, it's going to be in the extended rest that you can spend, well, hit dice to either get hit points back or, or remove temporary corruption. So even a powerful PC in, in Ruins of Symbarum will start looking for a safe haven uh, quite soon and try to remember where they are. So because this place is dangerous. And even if you're powerful, eventually you're going to have low, you're going to be low on hit points and high on temporary corruption. And then you're in trouble because you can't do much, even if your level is high. Um, as I said, the mechanics are different, but the feeling should be the same. It's a dangerous yeah. place, and you need to be yeah. careful. You stated in a, in other interview that uh, uh, you you tried to keep the soul of Simba Room intact. It yeah. can be the yeah. same game because we are talking about two different systems uh, mm -hmm. that can be made similar but not the same. But the soul, yes. the soul uh, is uh, is the same. Uh, Simbarum has this horizontal progression, so you have three levels, uh, two degrees of mastering a skill, but then you yeah. can go on the roof and above the roof to the sky. D and D has. Uh, they are continuously plus one, plus one, plus one, more, more, and more. And so uh, I was worried and uh, I read some uh, uh, doubts from the community about uh, this, uh, uh, the possibility of losing the, the, um, the feeling of being at risk, the, uh, the fear of being under the trees of Davokar because you are 16 and you already made 20 levels in, with three campaigns and you are stronger than the gods. Instead, yeah. corruption and so the power of the of the forest itself uh, is the main element that you used uh, to keep uh, uh, to keep the soul of Simbarum uh, uh, the soul of Simbarum alive. But I saw yes. that uh, uh, you have presentation uh, um, in both the uh, the souls of Simbarum because I always I always loved that uh, you can play Simbarum both. Uh, under the trees of Davokar, but also in the uh, in the land of Umbria, where intrigues yeah. are, where there is a, a lot of things to do because it's a, a newborn kingdom, and uh, yeah. uh, with barbarians, with the problems of nobles, with a, a mysterious yeah. queen. So there are also rules, for example, the PC domains. So you also yeah. uh, put effort and rules for the political part of yeah. this game. Yes. So we're going to, we, and not all of this is, uh, for 5e, we haven't really decided. There are some intrigue rules already available for 5e. We also have them from Simbarum, so we're going to see if they match or if we do some variant. Um, we haven't decided, we, the state we're in right now is basically that the, the, um, the player's handbook, uh, mm -hmm. or player's guide, as we call it in 5e, yeah. the rules of Simbarum. Uh, is has a first draft and it plays well. It, the game master, uh, master's guide is in a very early stage and not everything is is settled. And the the beast theory, um, uh, ha, we know exactly what monsters go in, but we haven't converted all the stats. Okay, um, that's where we're at, um, uh, basically with the with the production side.
So some, some things are still in, up in the air and we're testing them out to make sure that they work fine. But everything that relates specifically to your character, as in the player guide, is, is basically done. But not everything on the game master side, like Intrigue or some other, not some others, is not exactly uh, fixed yet, but it will be. One more thing that I would uh, forgot that I would like to mention is that we also want to ha have one part, part of bringing the soul of, of Simurum to 5e 5e can be they, it, it does a lot of hand holding mm -hmm. it, it makes sure that if you walk into a dungeon then it's very unlikely that the monsters there are more dangerous than you are it's sort of always pretty balanced um but we don't want that we want the simbarum thing where you don't really know what you're going to meet and you might yeah. be uh you might be up against something that you can't handle with weapons yes uh yeah. so you need to be careful and when, what we like about Simbarum is people often create characters that are good at fighting and then they sneak, negotiate, and flee a lot. Yeah. Uh, because it makes more sense to us to have a world that is where, where encounters are dangerous and you might not want to fight unless you have to. Yes. Uh, and this also goes back to we, uh, and also in Umbria, when you do the intrigue uh, thing, you face smart opponents and they're not going to attack you unless they think they can win or at least they have a good chance. Yeah. Which means that a lot of the fighting that, that I think happens in 5e is, I'm going to be blunt and say, it's a bit lazy design. It's monsters attacking you. They have no chance of winning. Uh, they should know that, but they do it because it fits the adventure. You should have a number of encounters before the adventure is over. So we try to avoid that and have fewer and more deadly fights. Yeah, uh, in Ruins of Imbrium too. So it creates more good role playing when yeah. you don't know exactly what, what uh, challenge you're up for. You know your level, but you don't know what you're meeting. Yeah. So there, there's always a bigger monster somewhere. You might meet it, and it's not going to be fair. So don't okay. just roll sword and, and rush in because that's going to might be the last thing you do. Yeah, so you will that's play. That's also going to be part of a uh, Ruins of Simbrum. Yeah. It will be challenging. Play, yes, we'll play without their seat best they will be they will have to be always uh, uh, cautious because yes. everything can be extremely dangerous both uh, in the political then uh, from the battle and exploration part and that is something I, I always loved to be uh, to be challenged to be to, um, that I have to be always uh, cautious and never give something for done another question. And now you have uh, your setting with two game system. What will be your publishing, your editorial line? You will make uh, uh, books from both the line. You will publish uh, systemless uh, lore books uh, to be used for both the game system. Have you already think about the future? Yeah, um, I think we will. They're, they're different enough to be different books. We don't want to do books with double okay. uh, systems. I mean, if you play the original game, you don't want a lot of 5e content. And if you play 5e, you maybe you don't want the stats in um, in the original system. So they would be different. They would be separate. We also prefer to do, which you've probably seen in the Th Throne of uh, Thorns campaign. Mm -hmm. uh, we prefer to have both adventures and setting material in the same book. Uh, if you go to Karvosti, for instance, and meet, work with the, uh, and do intrigues uh, there, and you're in the forest around it. Um, okay. Uh, you, 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 so we're probably going to mix and stick with, we, we, the plan we have now at least is to keep, keep that format. So you will, you will, we will present another part of the world and add an adventure there. And it will be two different books, one for the original, uh, and one, and one for, for 5e. Yeah. Okay, let's take a step back to Simbaru, the original one. Uh, what is, in your opinion, the best uh, contribute you uh, you gave to this game? Um, wow, it's hard. But something I'm, I'm really happy with is how we decided that the forces of... There's sort of three, three powers working in the game. There's nature that creates, there is man that disciplines and, and uh, uses, uh, and when man overuses the world or whoever overuses the world, actually exploiting nature, you create corruption, which is the third 
dark force that comes back okay. at you. When you, all, when you get corruption, you, you deserve it or somebody else did it and you're just unlucky to be nearby, right? So these yes. are the three, creation, discipline, and sort of destruction, I guess. This is not something we came up with. It's an ancient theme. It's been done <clears throat> many times. But we, we, we thought it fit this, this uh, setting really well. But I think what I'm most proud of is uh, how we, the, the creatures that are tied to nature, let's say the elves, for instance. Yes. Not to spoil too much of a spoiler, but they, they move with the seasons. They're more like a caterpillar that turns into a butterfly. Yes. Through a number of stages. And they're not exactly the same. They're, just, they're not just small elves becoming slightly taller elves as they grow older. The youngest elves are capricious. They're, we call them spring elves. They're, they're happy or at least carefree. It can be dangerous, but they're, they're more of a sort of a pixie or a leprechaun type creature. Who yes. then turns into a young elf, which is a summer elf, which is usually what I guess what we play. Um, they are they, they want to learn about the world. They want to travel. They're doing stuff more like that. It, they turn into autumn elves who are more, I guess, Elrond-like if you want to go to Tolkien. Yeah. They're wiser. They're more powerful. They're often, they often have a dark streak because they understand uh, the nature of the world and that it, a little side note is that the elves of, of um, Swimbarum are not all elves. They are the elves part of what's called the Iron Pact and their only yes. job is to protect the forest of Davokai mostly from humans. And they and some of the older ones know that this is probably not going to work. So they are sort of already understanding that this might go to uh, to a yeah. very uh, horrible place. Yes. And then be, the autumn elves probably realize this better than others. They've been her, they might have been around when Simbarum existed. So they've seen humans before, and they know what humans can do, and they don't stop. I really liked. Uh, uh... Symbol when I first read uh, the Italian version that I bought uh, many years ago, uh, because uh, uh, the settings uh, was really great. But the yes, uh, I found it very interesting because they were uh, a unique, uh, a unique version of the elves, different from other games, and uh, uh, they had this uh, a strange uh, cycling nature that make uh, elves uh, different not only from the other elves, but from each other one, uh, each other type you can uh, find in double car. And I fell in love with this concept because it was really, really interesting. Now, uh, two questions uh, before finishing this interview. The first is, uh, where does your heart beat? In the space of the sword horizon of Coriolis or under the shadow of the trees of double car? Oh, that's really hard. Uh... No, but I, I love them in different ways, I guess, but I want to, I'm going to be honest with Coriolis. I think Coriolis is a great game. I'm super happy with it, but the first edition that I, that I mostly wrote was, it's, it's sort of a low, low budget movie. There's a lot okay. of great ideas in it, but the execution isn't so well. We didn't really have the budget to make it yes, great. Yes, yes. So, so the Free League picked that up and made the second edition that you have right behind you there on the shelf, okay. which is a much better game. It's easier. Now to it's a blockbuster. Yeah, yeah. Well, I think so, but I think yeah. we could do even better. So I yeah. would like. I, I'm, I'm, like this. I love them both. I'm more happy with how Simbarum has turned out. Okay. I think that's a better game design-wise, but the ideas of Coriolis are amazing. I love the setting. So we need to. I would. Uh, I need an excuse to go back there and, and do more and better. <laughs> okay. That's okay. And then last question: uh, If you have time, because uh, adaptation of Ruins of Symbol will take most of your time and play testing. Uh, what are you currently playing? Um, well, first off, we use. Uh, we have a guy called Jacob um, uh, Rogers who's helping us with Five E. He does most of the heavy lifting, so I'm, I'm involved, but I'm not up to my neck in it, which is nice. Okay. It's really good. Yes. Uh, and that's how we want to do it. We don't want to, we're not going to stop producing material for the original Symbarum just because we need 5e. We're going to continue doing both. Uh, so, but uh, what I'm playing right now, we have a, uh, first off, I'm playing a campaign in, in the original Symbarum. I'm doing the Throne of Thorns campaign. I'm yeah. In, um, we're in the 
uh, deep in Davokar, heading for for Simbar. Uh, they're not. It's not going well for the players, <laughs> but I'm having a good time. <laughs> <laughs> you are you are the master or a player? I'm I'm the game master. Yes. Ah, okay. Uh, now I understand the smile when you say that's not going good for the players. No, uh, okay. that was, but it was that is fantastic. What I think is when Silverum is really good, they met the monster, a really bad monster in the deep depths of the forest, and for some reason they decided to kill it. Okay. Which was fine. It's up to them. So they, they made an alliance with some trolls and even got some elves to help them and eventually killed the monster. Oh. And then they kept going. And so then I I sort of made them... Um, I, I also Then I reminded them that they could probably have gone around the monster if they wanted to. But And now they killed the monster. So all, the, all their comp competitors, the other treasure hunters that came behind them... Okay. With, move really fast because yeah. there's no most yeah no more obstacles yes yeah exactly so they were the, the other guys would just catch up yes so they lost a day or two fighting the monster and getting an alliance together yeah. and now the other guys don't have to spend time so yeah the, 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 they, they, they'll get in the, and so now they're sort of being annoyed that they thought that they had to fight it I mean, like they should have left it there to slow everybody else down yes. and see if they could yes. bypass it Yes, so, so that's a really good. That's the last uh, session. It was really. Fun. Yeah, interesting. I, I, had, I had a great time. And the there is intrigue guys, even the in the dark. Yes, yes, interesting. Okay, before saying goodbye, I thank all the followers that spend a little part of their time to be here uh, with us. Uh, if you want, uh, remember to place the I like button in the Facebook page or the subscribe button. There is something there because I'm, I'm above you in the interview. You are under me now and there, there will be the subscribe button. Hi, hi, yeah. Matisse. Thank you. Hello. Thank you for, uh, for the interview. Uh, I'm very happy to have in this uh, conversation. Uh, from all the stuff, uh, good luck uh, for all the remaining work for Ruiz of Simbarum and for the ending of this brilliant Kickstarter campaign. Thank you. Thank you so much. Goodbye. Goodbye. Bye -bye.